We want to thank our sponsor, Dark Kryptonite. Dark Kryptonite stops ransomware, malware, and phishing in their tracks, eliminating cybercrime, fraud, and information warfare. Dark Kryptonite utilizes advanced blockchain algorithms and zero trust models. Learn more at www.darkkryptonite.com. Our guest today has broad experience in cybersecurity, privacy, compliance, risk, and data protection, and is a speaker, motivator, and mentor. Lasad Fridi is VP and CISO at Frontline Education and is responsible for all security matters, including corporate and product security. Before joining Frontline Education in early 2020, he joined the private sector at CSpace as Chief Compliance and Information Security Officer and Data Protection Officer. He helped CSpace navigate the complex global regulatory landscape and meet its global compliance and security needs. He currently serves on the Graduate Professional Studies Advisory Board at Brandeis University. Hey, welcome to our show, Lasan. Well, curious, what keeps you up at night? What is your cyber fear? You know, um, there are there are the unknowns, and I think that's that's a a big big thing for for in a lot of areas, not just cybersecurity, but specifically in cybersecurity. It's what you don't know that I think is the top of my mind all the time, and what you don't know, you can't deal with. Uh, you can't manage it. You can't mitigate it. You can't. Um, uh, you know, address it properly. Uh, and I think that's, that is one of the things that keeps me, um, keeps me up at night, as you say, as well as key, it's on the top of my mind. It's how much is it that I don't know, uh, vulnerabilities, risks, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, non-compliance, all those things keep me up at night. Yeah, that's a good point. And I was thinking about when you're mentioning that, a lot of those things have to do with education and the importance of regularly educating ourselves, as well as those that we maybe speak to, because you're, you're, you're a public speaker, uh, you're a professor, uh, you're a business person. So you've got a lot of crisscross into different uh, realms, and you're constantly educating people. Maybe share with us a little bit about that. What do you do to keep yourself educated? How do you keep up with the cybersecurity trends that are constantly changing? Well, you know, part of my role is is to educate, raise awareness, and make sure that my workforce is is up to par with the challenges that we see in the in the industry and we see around these days. Um, and, and obviously, to educate people, you have to educate yourself first. And and one of the the ways to do that is to attend conferences, to to be part of uh, major organizations and and uh, uh, associations. Uh, is also to network with with colleagues and and people who may be smarter than you, and 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 learn from them, and uh, and keep uh, up to date with the news. I mean, sometimes you know people don't want to you know bother with listening and hearing and and keeping uh, up to date with the news, but I think it's very important because we see yeah. quite a few uh, major issues companies have um, from a cybersecurity, compliance, data privacy um, that. That make the news, and and obviously none of us want to be in that in that front line uh, headline kind of um, you know uh, exposure. So we we have to continue on on learning, continue on applying what we learn, and, and passing that that learning to um, to our workforce, our teams, uh, the people that. Uh, and our organizations in general, whether it's the you know the C-suite all the way to the individual contributors, um, so a variety of sources, a variety of uh, reading um, books that are you know the latest and greatest, and I think that's a that's a variety. It has to be a variety of sources that you learn from and you keep up to to speed of what's happening. We are in a world that uh, that is especially in, in cybersecurity and and. And, you know, technology in general is changing by the day. 
Uh, if you uh, if you attended conferences a couple of years ago or learned things a couple of years ago, those are likely have you know been updated or uh, because the the hackers and the bad guys out there are learning and they are learning fast and they're learning about us, about our behaviors, about our um, weaknesses. And the way to counter that is we need to keep up to speed on what they're learning, what they're applying, how they're trying to get us. And that way we could uh, have our defenses uh, matching their their attacks and their uh, their ways of trying to get to us. Yeah, I think you make a really good point there. I, I do see that, that cyber criminals, they're constantly using technology to their advantage. And that means they're staying on top of it. And and we would be remiss if we did not do the same. So to your point, yeah, we, we got to be going to those conferences and, and talking to our colleagues and, and really sharing information with one another about the latest threats and how to overcome them. What are the common vulnerabilities? And I'm curious to think from, from your perspective, when we look at where we are in the state of cyber, and as you mentioned nicely, it has changed and evolved over the past few years. How are we doing at it as a whole if we say, hey, the good guys, what's your perspective on that? Are we winning the battle? Are we still losing the battle, as some might think? Or where do we kind of fit in that? I'm curious. Good question. I, I think it really depends on how you look at it. So are we a step behind? Absolutely. We're always a step behind these guys because we can't predict where they're going to, to head. It's very hard to. I mean, we, if we could predict that, we would be, uh, uh, we would be very safe and secure and probably multimillionaires. But the problem is it's hard to predict where they're heading. But, uh, it's, it's the, it's the same analogy as a, uh, you know, the cop and the thief. You know, you're always one step behind to try to stop them, catch them and, and, and diffuse what they're trying to do. Um, but I think we're, we're doing a decent job in, um, in creating the tools, the processes, the cultures. Um, and that's one thing that I, that keeps me in my, uh, up at night is the human factor. Um, and uh, keeping the, 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 the humans and the first line of defense all up to par with, with how these folks operate. What are they after? How do they attempt to penetrate? And I think it's, it's really, important to think like a like a hacker to think like a bad guy <clears throat> excuse me and you don't have to be a bad guy but you th- you got to think you got to emulate that and and think about what they may uh see as an opportunity and that therefore you can uh, get try and maybe get a step ahead of them uh but often we're we're reactive to some extent obviously preparing and putting the technology the processes the policies the um the workflows the the habits in the human being uh day to day operations very important uh but i think it, it's important to make sure that we're uh trying to predict it's very hard, obviously. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong, but um, it, it's a journey. Uh, the, the whole cybersecurity thing is a journey. It's not a destination. And anytime you think you made it or got to the point where you want it to be, um, the, the hackers and the, the bad guys are uh, one step ahead of you and they try to, to get at you from a different angle. Our attack surfaces vary from one company, from one you know group to another, uh, and from an industry to another. And having uh, having that uh, that visibility, as I was talking earlier and said about about the unknown, and and one of the ways to figure that out is to have visibility as much visibility as you can uh, into your surface, into your environment, and having that visibility will allow you to know where they may be coming from, where they may be trying and attempting to to uh, to um, uh, intrude on your data to take your data away and monetize it uh, own your system with ransomware uh, so it is it's a uh, an important uh, factor that we try to keep up with them in order for us to succeed and secure our data secure our our organizations and uh, and, and our customers or clients mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well said. And Lasada, I like how you point out there, it's it's kind of a journey. And we're grateful that 
you're part of this journey, helping in this process, fighting the bad guys and educating people. So we appreciate all that you do. Hey, and maybe you can help us, some of our, our viewers and listeners, if, if they want to reach out and connect with you or learn more about some of the great stuff that you're doing, what's the, what's the best way they can connect with you? Thank you. So I, I have a website that I have to say is a work in progress. It's lasadfree.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, also have uh, LinkedIn. Um, it's I think it's the uh, eternal uh, conference, if you will, where you could connect with people, you could exchange ideas, you could uh, network. Uh, and it's uh, you search me Lasad Fridi uh, at uh, in on LinkedIn. That's my uh, uh, my handle there. Um, and I think that uh, you know, people. If you Google my name, you'll find ways to to get in touch. But uh, uh, you know, I think LinkedIn is a very very useful tool in this sense. Wow. Um, uh, active on LinkedIn to to some degree. Obviously, cybersecurity being uh, being one of my you know being my responsibility is very uh, challenging, and uh, it leaves little time for for sometimes uh, you know doing the extent that I could on networking and being on the, but I have a great uh, following, great people um, that I follow and learn from. And I think I encourage people to go on LinkedIn and uh, and connect. That's great. Well, well thank you again, Lisa, for you, for your insight and spending a little bit of time with us sharing your cyber fears and all the things that you appreciate in the world of cybersecurity. Thank you. Thank you for having me.